for this material setup, um, it may look a little complex, um, but we're going to dive in real fast. Uh, we're not going to go through how to set this up from scratch because in the previous video, um, it actually has most of the core components that we need for this complex one. Um, the advantage we have with this uh, complex material, if I move this out of the way, um, is that we've got this variation. Uh, we have a, a, a third and fourth variation of our materials of the base one. Um, in this case, what I've done with this is actually um, decrease the roughness so we get kind of this wet look. So in conjunction to being able to paint this blend, so we have our clean tiles, our broken tiles, I can use my green and blue channels to make um, either the base material or our mat one or our mat two look wet or dry or anything that you choose. Um, so that's what's really cool about this setup. So let's just dive in real quick and kind of demystify this whole complexity. Um, and I think it should be pretty apparent once we get done. So um, based on like our, our previous material, you can see here, this is the exact same setup we had set up in the last one, right? This is our UV tiling. We're able to tile it in U and V so we can scale it up or down. And then we've got this offset, which allows us to kind of position the texture to get it more uh, fine-tuned control. It's then plugged into our base inputs. Now, um, in the previous one, I used the actual textures we're using, but for these, these are simply just placeholders that indicate that, you know, hey, I need to replace these. So same exact process, convert it to parameters by right-clicking, convert to parameter, um, and that exposes these. And then I simply broke off on our base color because I wanted some specular uh, breakup. I simply just took the red channel. Um, so nothing fancy there goes to our specular. So we have our make material attributes. And if you remember in the previous one, we then broke it out to this break material attributes, and then we plugged it into our height lerps, and we blended the material one and material two together. Um, that's still going to occur in this step, but what I want to do is essentially duplicate that exact same setup we had for our mat one, two, and mat two blending, but I want to do my mat one base and my, my mat one variation. So both material one, but our variations. So you can see here we have exact same thing. We've got our height lerp. So we have our base and our secondary transition phase um, is going to be the same thing. Our vertex color, um, which goes down to here. And then we've got our height texture and our contrast parameter. So the difference here is that what I've done is I've also broken out into this section. So off of our our base here, um, our base mat one, um, I've done another break material attributes, and then I've simply taken my base color, added a mat one, so M1 base control multiply, which again, it's just hold down one, create a uh, one, one parameter, uh, I'm sorry, one vector, convert to parameter, and we'll name it M1 BC multiply, and that's it, and I, I took this to a multiply. So what's happening here is this gives me another control to be able to multiply my base color, so I can make it brighter, darker, to give me a little bit more variation. Um, I've also done the same thing with our specular channel, just to multiply so I can control that, and then our roughness. As I said before too, um, I'll put a link in the description of this one, that um, I do cover how to go more in depth with creating these master materials. So you could do a, a crazy variation here to do some desaturation or anything where you're utilizing the uh, texture inputs that you already have, which again is for your base material one, but through some of these additional parameters, you get a different look at a relatively cheap cost. Uh, but for this one, I wanted to keep it fairly simple and straightforward, but to show you the variation. So here, um, I've just set the default parameter on this one to 0.1, just so it's kind of that wet, glossy, makes it look like maybe water's there. So I come out of the roughness on this one, into our multiply, and then the exact same process. So um, again, this, this guy down below, this is just our base material one. And then this is our variation, and then we simply blend them. So come out, for example, our roughness here, we'll go into our A channel for our base, and our B will be our, um, our variation on here. Now the difference here uh, from the previous one is that we're still going to use, um, in our vertex colors, our red channel to control the blending between the base material and the second material. So not the variations of those, but just material one and material two. But we have these additional channels, our green and blue. So if I highlight over green, you'll see that this is what we're using as our transition phase between our material one base and our material one variation. Um, so that's what we'll use to be able to paint and control where those variations occur. And then in addition, I've actually created this, um, this uh, 
another parameter here, because if you remember, we had our material one and, and material two blend contrast, but I need to create another parameter that controls the contrast between those two. Um, and you can set it to zero. Um, and so that that is the setup for our material one base and our material two, uh, I'm sorry, material one base, material one variation. Um, and then I simply went in and just duplicated that exact same setup. Um, so you can see here with our material two, it's the exact same. So we come out, we do a break material attributes. Um, so this is our, our base, and then this is our variation, and the exact same controls minus, I've just changed the name to M2, so it's not M1. Um, and then we go into our height lerp and we blend those. The difference here being is that under our transition phase, I've now changed that to the blue vertex color so we can control that individually. And then our height texture, I've actually created another parameter here from the top one, which is our M2 height. This is important because we're blending the variations together of the second one, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have the appropriate height map. So um, I'll show you in our material instance where we've set that up, but just know that you're gonna need your secondary height in this one as well as a parameter. And then finally, um, under our contrast, that's where I created this M2 blend contrast. So if we just take a step back real fast, um, so we can see here, uh, again, this setup here, so we've got from here, here, and to here. This is the exact same setup we did in the previous video. There's nothing different about this. Um, the difference is, is that we've taken this variation, we've simply broken off our base, added a couple uh, parameters in between to control, uh, again, just multiplies, um, and then we've blended those. So again, this, this blend here are these two combined together. Um, so I'll keep this kind of, uh, I'll keep this highlighted so you can see, maybe, flex it. Um, there we go, use that. So that's, that is our material one, material one variation being blended together. Again, this blend exact same process we did in the previous video with blending the two materials together. And then finally, we just duplicate that whole process down here. So this is our material two with its variation and then blended together. And then our height blends, exact same process, just simply added another material two, um, height map, and then our parameter. Okay, so that controls the materials being blended together. So now we have a material one in this variation, material two in its variation. The last step, again, is exactly the same as what we've been doing with blending, and that is simply to blend these two variations together. So in here, where we have our material one and material two base color coming in, we simply pump that result out to another height lerp in the exact same process of blending these. Um, and then for our height texture, we'll use our base. So if we follow this guy, it goes here to our material one. Our parameter here for our material uh, one and two blend contrast. Sorry, maybe I've got the, the wrong one. Um, so we use that for our contrast. And then um, we'll use our vertex color, so our red, so I'll highlight of this. So we're using our red vertex to control where those two are blended together. Um, and that's it. That final result is then pumped into a make material attributes, and then it's then pumped out. And that's it. So a lot of copy pasting and repeating, but what we have now, um, are two additional variations over our base. So let's let's take a look at actually what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. Um, so this guy has, in fact, actually, you know what? Let's let's open this up and I'll show you what's happening here. So this is our material instance. Um, so you can see here. I'll roll these guys up. So we have our material one base and our material two base, um, and these are the exact same that we saw in the previous. Right? We have our input maps. So we have our UV tiling and UV offset. Same for material one base and our material two base. Um, so that's set up. And then what we have as well is each one of these has a variation. And these are those parameters that we exposed. So we can multiply the base. Uh, we can make it brighter, darker. Same thing with specular and with our roughness. And with our roughness, the default is 0.1, but of course we can change that. Um, but 0.1, less rough, will make it look more wet. So that's the variation that we wanted. Um, and the same goes for mat two, uh, mat two variation. And that's it. Um, the rest is all pretty self-explanatory. We've got our same contrast, our um, same height, blending, and that's it. So that's what's been applied to this guy. So let me go ahead and just remove all of our vertex um, colors. So you can see almost the exact same setup. If we go into our red, we start masking away. There we can see our, again, same thing, where we've got our, our material one and our, and our material two blending. 
Um, but now this is where it gets really cool. So if I go into my green, um, so if we jump back to our material here, and we follow the green, we can see that our green is giving us the variation of our map one. So that's gonna apply the variation over top. So if we look at our material here, let me just kind of keep this off to the side. So our material one is this broken tile. So when I apply the green, we should be able to see it in these areas. So if I go back to green, and then we'll show it. This may be a little difficult to see. I'll rotate it here. So that's our base, and then this is um, over top. So you can see it's not affecting um, our secondary material, it's just our first material. So if I go into here, mat one variation, and change my roughness, here we can see it's doing something. So I'll take this, again, point 0.1, then I can multiply it. So you can see that it is affecting um, this material one. So really, really cool, we can get these wet spots now, or dry spots. So that's our, our green channel, and if we go to our blue channel, it should do the same thing on this area. So now we're painting more of the wetness. Now I realize that the underlying tile was um, kind of glossy to start with, so I'll go in the opposite direction. So we'll take our mat 2 variation, we'll actually make this less rough. So now, I take this down to say 0.1 in blue channel, and I'll go ahead and just fill this back in. You can see that we can we add the secondary variation on it. So I'll come in here, paint some of this, make it super rough, just easier to see. Okay, I'll take this back up to 0.5, and we'll blend it back out. So there you go. So now I'm getting that that subtle secondary variation, um, simply through this uh, this setup. So that concludes setting up and using. Um, layered materials using a height alert blend um, in Unreal Engine. So I hope this helped. Um, again, I love this process. I think it's extremely valuable, especially for environment artists who are creating um, you know, uh, some materials that can be used and give you material variation without seeing repetition. So I hope you guys like this. Um, as always, I really appreciate you guys' support. If you have um, suggestions for future things you guys would like to see, drop them in the comments. I do read those. Um, I do appreciate all of those, uh, all of you guys that have posted comments. Um, that's definitely helped me get some ideas for future videos that we can do with this one. So um, thank you guys for watching and uh, catch you on the next one.